Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. This is Tamur and this is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. Now, Q1 of 2024 has been finished. We are in April now. And, you know, 25% of this year is gone, which is quite incredible. I feel we were just making the new resolutions just like a few days back, honestly. But it's no doubt that the job market is a bit tough right now, especially for people who are looking for jobs or wanting to break into cybersecurity or cloud security, you know. It's a very saturated job market with the layoffs and new people coming. So it's very important for you to know your skills, to make sure that you stand out, right? And this is what I wanted to talk about. Now, unfortunately, like I said, the tech layoffs have been going off. And the result of that is a lot of people are coming into the industry. Experienced people are coming into the industry and newcomers also. So it is getting tougher and tougher to land jobs. Like a lot of people are reaching out to me. And they, they're looking at the videos I've made about the cloud security. I always say cloud security is a good market because of the AI boom and the overall, the way the markets are pushing towards the cloud. Cloud security is always a good way to, like, a, it's a good bet. But a lot of people are complaining to me and they're saying they're not getting those jobs. They, are, they have done all the cloud security search, the AWS, the Azure, CCSP, but unfortunately, jobs are very, very tough to come by. And after talking to a lot of people, I've seen one common mistake which they are making and which I've told time and time again, but I thought it's good to make a video to re, like refresh this thing, which is they are focusing too much on certifications and not on skills. And I always say skills will beat certifications uh, anytime. So they are over focusing on certifications and under focusing on skills. And you know, if you have certifications, it will get you that interview. It will get you that initial call, but it is your skills that will land you a job. So that's why I wanted to focus specifically on what skills you should develop for a successful cloud security career. You focus on these, I guarantee you will see your career prospects improve, okay? So without further delay, what am I talking about? So sorry, before we move ahead, do like and subscribe to this channel. I'm very happy to say we've broken like 5,000 subscribers. This is a very, very small channel, but still it's pretty nice to see that actually 5,000 people care about what I'm saying. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to talk about everybody is infrastructure as code. And I cannot tell you how many cloud security people I know who still do not know how infrastructure as code works or they're not able to code infrastructure in the cloud. And this is a very, very like foundational skill. You cannot like create infrastructure in the cloud, right? Without knowing this, without knowing how Terraform works or how uh, say cloud formation works. A little bit of knowledge about infrastructure code is absolutely essential. I hate to tell you this, nobody is spinning up servers or databases or VPC subnets or networking or anything in the cloud to the management console. They might do it on off, but usually all of it is done through infrastructure as code. You need to know how to do it. I'm not talking about running a scan on infrastructure as code. You need to know how they work and basically spin up a small network within the cloud, right? This is how basically you write the code as template, then you apply it and you can go ahead and create it in AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, Oracle, wherever you want it, right? But this skill is quite essential. You need to know at least the basics of infrastructure as cloud. And honestly speaking, this is not difficult in today's world, right? A lot of people, they tell me I'm not a coder. I don't know how these templates work. Okay, I, I, I'm no longer a coder. I used to code like 20 years back. But honestly speaking, nowadays with chat GPT, you can literally put a chat GPT prompt ask it to spin up a basic infrastructure. It can literally teach you step by step. Just try to prompt it. You can use Gen AI to teach you. If you don't like that, you can go to the, like download something like Visual Studio Code and use something like uh, GitHub Copilot, right? It, it will literally write the code for you. Literally, it will write the code for you and you can run it. There are a million tutorials present. Let me know if you want me to make like a basic, I'm not like a expert on this. There are a million channels better than mine on this, but you can use now tools. It's no longer what it used to be like uh, seven, eight years back that you needed to know coding and you need to do coding yourself, right? If you don't like GitHub Copilot, there's something called Amazon Code Whisperer. I am I work in Amazon, just a full disclaimer, but this is an amazing tool, completely free. You can download it, download Visual Studio Code, download Code Whisperer and just link it. It will write the code for you, okay? And you will, it's a completely AI generated code. So we are living in a very different world, guys. You need to be AI literate if you want to succeed. So please do take a look at this and get literate with AI, get literate with infrastructure as code, right? So that was the first skill which I see people do not have. And that is something employers are looking. They will not take you seriously if you have certifications. 
but if they ask you give you a simple infrastructure as code template or they ask you to spin up basic infrastructure and you're not able to do it okay that will give a like a bad impression and you want to avoid that okay so the next thing is cloud security tooling so i've already made a video on this i'm not going to spend too much time on this guys but uh, I need you to understand that, you know, all these major cloud providers, they have some amazing tools like, like Security Hub, Windows Defender, but you cannot escape open source cloud security tooling, you know, free tools, which will do a scan of your cloud environment, which will basically run basic checks. And because they lend themselves to automation, I have made a complete video on this, what cloud security tools I use and I really like. I'm going to link it here. I don't want to repeat the same information I've already talked about. I'm going to link here, link it here in this video. So check that out, please. Okay. The next step is CICD pipelines. Now, when I say CICD pipelines, most people I see, they just know DevSecOps. They say, okay, I know about DevSecOps. What did you know about DevSecOps? The concepts, right? If I ask them to basically spin up a simple pipeline, right? They cannot spin up a simple pipeline. Just download something like Jenkins, completely free. Install it on your computer and try to, uh, what do you call, run like a basic pipeline. Just deploy code to the cloud using Jenkins. If you've already learned infrastructure as code, move on to Jenkins and then set up a simple pipeline, which automatically deploys code for you. Again, they are like a gazillion free tutorials present on YouTube, but try to learn how to do this. Once you've learned how to do this, then move on to how to secure this pipeline, right? If you write insecure code, how to stop this, learn how to plug in those free uh, cloud security tools that we talked about that will stop the pipeline from moving ahead and delivering insecure infrastructure into production. A lot of cloud security professionals, they think that they will have these commercial tools present and they will be able to plug in. No, you need to know how these tools work. There are so many tools, like there's something called Chekhov. I've used this many times. This is a completely free infrastructure as code tool. It will scan your templates and it will let you know if there are any uh, security vulnerabilities, right? You can plug in, check off. Uh, there are completely awesome tools present. So this is like an example uh, result of check off. So it will plug into your pipeline and it will actually stop insecure infrastructure as code from being moved. So step by step, learn infrastructure as code. Uh, learn how the, about these free cloud security tools, try to deploy a pipeline and then plug in these tools. Okay, so you get a, what you call a natural progression and you see your skills being improved. In. Okay, what else is there? Now moving on to more advanced topics, which is containers or serverless. Again, you cannot escape containers or serverless when you are securing cloud environments. Uh, people think that when you move to the cloud, it's just going to be like same like on-prem, you will have servers and database to secure. But and when they come up against containers and things like serverless, they are completely different ways of uh, how like looking at security, right? These models, a container model and a serverless model, they are very different from trying to secure an on-prem server, trying to secure an on-prem database. And they completely change how you look at security. So when we talk about containerization, in case you're not familiar, it's just a way of bundling up your application and your dependencies, right? You can take an application, take everything it depends on, the web server, the dependencies, the libraries, put it in a container, and then you can deploy it in any environment. A lot of time, these uh, pipelines, these cloud environments, this is how they are working, right? Compared to, say, like a virtual machine, which is just deploys the operating system, a container bundles everything up, and then you can run it everywhere. So just try, in, if you want my, uh, what do you call, uh, advice, just deploy a simple container and learn how about how it works and how to secure them, right? How to secure container images as it's being downloaded. The other one is serverless. Serverless is basically code that runs in the cloud. You do not need to worry about infrastructure. You do not need to worry about servers or platforms or anything. It is, the, it is like the most uh, managed service on the cloud, you can say, the completely abstracted version. All you have to do is write code. You don't have to worry about operating systems or patching or anything like that, right? This is how it works. So this is another thing, serverless, which they say. It's very, very important to know. You need to know, again, write a simple Hello World uh, hello world function in the cloud. That will teach you how serverless works in, in AWS Lambda or Azure functions or Google Cloud. All these things are essential for learning how to secure the cloud environment. And the last one, very, very important, is multi-cloud security. Very, very important. You can, again, you cannot escape this. Uh, in a perfect world, you would only have one environment to secure, right? You like, uh, you would only have AWS or only have Azure or only have Google Cloud, but most companies now use a multi-cloud strategy or very minimum hybrid. 
So you need to understand what that means for security because then your security strategy changes, right, within the cloud. What are the things I'm talking about? So supposing you have Oracle or AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, are you going to be maintaining users differently? No, you need to know something like single sign-on. Do you know how to link, create a single sign-on, like something like Azure Active Directory, connected to Oracle Cloud or connected to AWS or connected to Google Cloud and Azure? You need to know about these things, right? Uh, so these are the benefits and these are the challenges when thinking about a multi-cloud environment. And that is just from the identity perspective. Again, if you have multiple cloud environments, how will you secure them, right? You have issues coming up in Azure, issues coming up in Google Cloud, issues coming up in AWS. And if you have a CISO and he wants a single dashboard about what are the vulnerabilities, what are you going to be doing? You need something like a cloud security posture management tool. And ask anybody in cloud security who has worked in a multi-cloud, he'll say the biggest challenges are visibility, knowing what are the different issues there and knowing like these misconfigurations, right? Because they are the biggest threats. Somebody can misconfigure Azure or AWS or Google Cloud. How would you know? So the, now you need to know about things like cloud security posture management solutions which will monitor these environments from a single dashboard and CISOs will get a unified dashboard showing what are the security risks, are they following best practices, what is the current cloud security posture, they will kick in and do auto remediation if something doesn't. So again, cloud security posture management, I've made videos on this, I'll try to link it here so you can take a look. And lastly, some things like cloud access security brokers, CASBs, um, they might be called by different names, but again, data leakage. How do you prevent, if you have many, many, uh, SaaS things like Dropbox or I don't know, SharePoint or uh, what do you call Salesforce? How do you stop somebody from downloading and stealing your data, right? You need something like a cloud access security broker, which is like a cloud data leakage. It works like a reverse proxy and it will look at all your traffic, which is going and actually secure it, right? Uh, take a look at my cloud security tools video. I'll again, I'll link it here, but this is one of the major challenges, right? The issue of shadow IT. What if users are bypassing your IT policies in the cloud without the knowledge of the cybersecurity team? Literally anybody with an internet connection can go home, access your Salesforce or Dropbox if you've not secured it. So this is a big, big challenge for the cybersecurity teams. And you need to know the concepts. You need to know how to secure them and how these things work. So this was like, uh, these were some of the cloud security skills which I wanted to focus on. The, the top five, I don't want to make this like a one hour video, but these are the top five I would recommend you focus on. Certifications will not teach you these things. You need to get hands on as much as possible. So I hope this gave you a good idea of how, where you should focus on. If you found this video, please do like and subscribe to this channel and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.